On the evening of the 18th of November, 1987, a fire erupted from an escalator tunnel into the main booking hall of King's Cross Underground Station in London, killing 31 people and badly injuring many others. The formal investigation into the disaster concluded that the fire spread rapidly because of something which has become known as the trench effect, an effect which was first identified through supercomputer simulations carried out at Harwell Laboratory in Oxfordshire. The fire started about halfway up escalator number four on the left-hand side of the tunnel looking up. The fire was probably started by a match dropped by a smoker falling through a gap between the escalator treads and side panels and igniting the grease below. The fire burned for a long time beneath the escalator before spreading above it. The fire spread rapidly and grew from one described by a fireman as a fire such as might be produced by a large cardboard box to one which within a very short time engulfed the booking hall with flames. This very rapid spread of the fire, the flashover, was not expected. It was important to understand why this had occurred so as to avoid such incidents in the future. Harwell Laboratory has extensive expertise in many areas. These include the mathematical modeling of flows and combustion and applications of supercomputers. This expertise has been applied to flow problems as diverse as coolant flows in nuclear reactors and the aerodynamics of vehicles. Harwell was asked by the health and safety executive to simulate the aerodynamics of the flow caused by the fire in the period leading up to the flashover. The simulations were carried out on the Harwell's computing center's Cray 2, one of Europe's fastest computers, and used the Harwell Flow 3D modeling software, which defined the model and calculated the flows and temperatures. A geometric model of the booking hall and the tunnel enclosing the three Piccadilly line escalators was set up. This side view shows the whole model, which was described to the computer in grid form. The Piccadilly line escalator tunnel, booking hall and ticket office can be seen. The tunnel is 42 meters long and has a diameter of nearly 7 meters. The escalators descend at an angle of 30 degrees to a floor level. 16 meters below the booking hall floor. The orbital passage around the booking hall and the Victoria Line escalator tunnel were not modeled, although allowance was made for entrances at these points. Finite volume techniques were employed in the study. The structure being examined was divided into small volumes, as shown on the grid. For a given source of heat, Representing the initial fire on the escalator, the software was used to calculate how the temperature and flow developed with time within each small volume. The software does this by calculating temperature, velocity and turbulence in each volume, and also calculating how each volume interacts with its neighbors. Moving inside the model, we can see the Victoria Line opening and the openings into the orbital passage. The ticket office can also be seen, although the ticket collection booths were not included. On the right is the area covered by a temporary wooden partition. Moving into the booking hall from the orbital passage, we pass by the ticket office on the left and onto the top of the Piccadilly Line escalator tunnel. We can now look at the results of the computer simulation. Although many program runs were carried out, the same features were found in all the results. The video therefore concentrates on one particular case. The section of the escalator is shown, including the handrails.
the colours show the surface temperatures for a time when the heat input was 2.16 megawatts. The colours show the temperatures ranging from ambient blue to the highest red. The red areas represent about 330 degrees Celsius. The heat is input into the small number of cells, 12 at the original location of the fire. Notice how the model predicts that high temperatures hug the floor of the escalator trench, the trench effect, and how the heat curls across the ceiling of the tunnel. For a larger heat source of 7 megawatts, the patterns, including the high trench temperatures, are very similar to the previous run, except that the overall temperatures are higher, up to a maximum of 653 degrees Celsius in the trench. This view from above uses particle tracks to show the flow patterns within the tunnel and booking hall with a 2 megawatt fire. The particles do not represent any particular substance, but are for illustration only, rather like smoke patterns in a wind tunnel. The tracks are coloured according to the speed of flow, with the blue tracks in the escalator trench at 8 metres per second, and the green tracks at 2 to 3 metres per second nearer the ceiling. The flow can also be seen curling over the ceiling into a corkscrew-like effect. These simulations first demonstrated the trench effect with the fastest and hottest flow from the fire remaining within the trench. One reason for this effect is a substantial chimney effect with a source of heat sucking large quantities of air from below. Jets and flames also have a tendency to stick to walls. This is related to the well-known coander effect. The combination of these two effects causes the plume containing the hot gases to bend over and hug the floor of the escalator trench. This description of the development of the fire was unexpected and created considerable interest and controversy when first presented. Immediately the health and safety executive and Edinburgh University built small-scale cardboard models. Fires in these models showed the features predicted by the simulations. The behaviour of fires can depend quite crucially upon their scale, and the health and safety executive decided to do a more realistic experiment. At their laboratory in Buxton, they built a one-third scale experimental model of the escalator tunnel and booking hall. Several experiments were carried out in this model. The main picture shows the fire from below and the insert shows the side view of the flames. In the case shown here, the flames initially stood upright, but after one minute and eleven seconds, they suddenly bent over and lay flat along the escalator floor. From then on, the flames spread quickly up the escalator, with the hot gases preheating the wood ahead of the flames. The flames and smoke from the trench also curled across the ceiling, eventually igniting the ceiling paint. These features were predicted in the simulations and are illustrated in both the views shown here.
These experiments confirm conclusively the role of the trench effect in the extremely rapid spread of the fire. The Fennel report produced by the inquiry concluded the sudden change in conditions when a modest escalator fire was transformed into the flashover which erupted into the tube line's ticket hall proved immensely difficult to explain. But I am now satisfied that what has been identified and become known as the trench effect is the proper scientific explanation. Computer modeling played a vital role in discovering the mechanism by which the fire spread. The use of modeling techniques and advanced graphics enabled not just reproduction of the event, but also understanding of why the fire behaved in this way. The same modeling techniques can be applied to many other challenging flow and heat transfer problems in a cost-effective fashion.